1977, if you had about 200 bucks to blow, you could buy this scanner right here. This is a Regency digital flight scanner. Sure, Cal 2, Romeo Victor, we have the weather. Uh, traffic in, uh, flight maintain visual, uh, HP 31. 37, Predator 29, take it. And they actually made two different variations of this. They made this flight scanner only, and then they actually made a police scanner. It looks just like this, except for it's... Uh, it, well, it's a police scanner. It's not this. And we'll look at that in a future video. Today, we are going to look at this one. Just This is a recent purchase off of eBay. And uh, it was sold as not working. And I could testify to the fact it is not working. That's what today's video is going to be all about. We are going to see if we could try to resurrect and get this radio up and working. No promises, no guarantees. At the time of this filming, absolutely no service manual or schematic for this thing is available. And I suspect it'll actually be that way even after I post this video. I have already started taking it apart. And that's when I decided, well, I should probably do a video on this because, well, there's not a repair video on YouTube about this. Let me reposition the uh, camera and we'll take a peek in here. All right, so this here is the top side. Underneath this right here is our um, our CPU and and uh, IF, RF, all that good stuff. Right here we have our power supply section and our antenna input and some other bits and bobs. Here we have a, a fuse. Now I did check the fuse. The fuse is just fine, not a problem. Let me bump you in a little tighter and you could take a peek at that. All right, so here is a close-up view of the top half of the uh, component side of the board. And here's a little uh, tighter shot of, uh, of the board. We can now see the components a little bit better here. I'll move the radio. It'll be easier than trying to move the camera. And here we could see the... Um, solder side of the board. Holler out if you see a problem. See a problem yet? And that, I believe, is what's wrong with the radio. We have a leaky cap that has went a little sideways and uh, so I hit this with the vinegar we'll clean this up we'll check it out and we'll see how those traces look I may need to scrape back some of that solder mask and um, see how the, the traces are however before we get into that let me go ahead and hook this up to power uh, so we could see what happens now uh, both on AC mains as well as DC, same thing. It, it does not fire up. I'm going to, uh, for the ease of it, because I'm, I'm right here with this and not that, I'm going to go ahead and hook up AC mains. I'm sorry, I'm going to hook up DC. And um, and uh, that would probably be a little safer, I, I reckon. I don't know. So we've got the positive there. I'm going to connect ground to this little stub right here. Good bite on it. And you probably are not going to be able to see my power supply too swell at this camera angle. It's going to be challenging. 
So what's going to happen is I'm going to plug this positive in and radio is off. I'm going to switch to amps. Now we've got, um, what, what do I have for volts? 12 and a half volts. And so when I hit the power switch, you could just barely see the 0 0.0. 0 0.02 amps right here. When I hit the power switch, you can see that it did change. It went to 0 0.04, which is saying that, yes, the radio is trying to pull current. Okay, so that time we just went up to uh, .8 or 0 0.8. Flicking the power switch there. I think it's a little dirty. But you can see we do have a stable 0 0.08. So that is telling us that we do have something happening, at least at the switch level. And if I repeat that very same step, now that you can see the scanner, you'll see nothing happens. So let's go ahead and kill the power supply. Let's flip this over. Um, I was going to say, if by chance you know where I can get a service manual schematic for this device for free or for a fee, please let me know. That would be really awesome to have. I would also need it for the other one that looks like this, the uh, K100, and that is the police scanner and we'll address that one in its own video all right so you see here in the center of your screen our work area and I'm going to take some cleaning vinegar and a toothbrush and just get in there really good and clean that up Do it in all directions. Do a nice wide swath. Not sure where all the corrosion went, but we'll do a little preventive maintenance and just get a nice wide area. Okay, now let's clean that up and see what happens. To wipe that off, I'm going to use some uh, pH neutral cleaning and degreaser. Nice big blob on the paper towel. Here we picked up a little debris there. It's green, looks mostly like the uh, conformal coating. And we can see that that's looking better already. Now I'm going to come in and rinse that off with some water, just some straight tap water.
And here we can see the uh, the area better now. See that trace right there in about the center of the screen looks looks horrible, and so does the pin right next to it. I don't have a pointy device. See this pin looks horrible. We're going to need to reflow that. Well, I think that's part of the cap, so of course we're going to reflow that. And that's the other leg. So everything in this black area will reflow that. Um, I'll see if I could check these traces without scraping the uh, conformal coating off of them too much. Uh, but we'll see what happens here. Do we even have a trace left right here? You can hear how crunchy that is. Well, it does look like we got a trace there. Just really, really corroded. Let me check it with the uh, continuity tester. All right, the uh, continuity tester on this meter is really low in volume. I don't know if the microphone will pick it up, so I'll, I'll call out. So we'll stab that, and then we'll come right up here. And we're getting nothing. Yeah, that that's that feels terrible. This area where we scraped. So looks like at a minimum we're going to have to uh, replace. Replace all that. I was not getting anything. Or I just wasn't getting past that corrosion enough. See, it does look like there's copper there. So it's, it's just really dirty. I'm going to have to clean that up. Let's try, uh, let's try these legs right here. So I'll come up here. Okay, that beeped. Beep. Beep. But that's all corroded. I could feel that on the probe. I can't see it with my bare eye. I'm sure if I had better eyes, I'd be able to see it, but... I could feel it, that it's dirty. Okay, so that, that trace is good all the way down here. Okay, that one's good. Can't uh, access that one. I get the needle stabbed in past all that. Yeah, that's all corroded. I can feel that. Okay, so that. That will need to be cleaned as well. Yeah, let's see here. 
more about this one. So that's going to need to be cleaned. These uh, trace patterns really mess with my eyeballs. Not getting nothing there. Oh, can't see too well, can you? All right, so from what I could tell at this moment, everything in this black area needs to be scraped and clean. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll come back when I've got that all scraped, and then we'll test it again. Okay, I have that area all scraped up, cleaned up. As we could see now underneath that, uh, we lost the copper plating on here, but we still have the underneath coating. I haven't yet checked these uh, for continuity. However, this one here, I will go ahead and uh, bridge together, put a, a new bus wire in here and get that all going. I'm suspecting that we're gonna be just fine. I tried to get everything that was black in nature uh, from, the, um, from the leakage. And uh, so, Let's go ahead and get the continuity tester. Again, not sure if you're gonna be able to hear this extremely loud tester, but I will um, holler out just the same. So we should be fine on this one. So that one was good. Uh, this one right here. So that's good. That one's good. This one here. Not sure how much I got off the solder, but that checks good. So, so far, I think I got a break right here. That's good. And so, right here we have a break. Good, no good. Good, no good. No good. Okay, good, good, no good. So apparently we have another break up in here, good, no good. 
I can't see it with my eye, but I could fill it with the probe. So we've got two breaks in this trace. We've got a break right here and a break right there. So that could be an issue or part of the issue. I know the capacitors, of course, are bad. So that's good. Oh. Good. Good. And we got a break right there. Again, I can't see it, but I can fill it with my probe. And as you see, so good, no good. Wonder if that's a break too. Yep, there's a, another break right here. Good, no good, good, good. 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 No good. So we have a break right here. This dark spot right here, we have a break. <laughs> Nothing. 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 So this whole dark area is no good. And that's good right there. So no good. I, I can't Hell, if there's supposed to be a, a leg there or if that's a break there. Okay, good. No good. So we have a, another break right here. And there's no continuity between these two points. Apologize that my hands are in the way. Okay, continuity. None. Could have swore when I checked that earlier that, but I could be thinking of the wrong trace. So, so far that whole string is no good. Good, okay, good, good. Uh, I think I need to come back and touch that one up. It looks icky, and maybe even that one. So maybe I didn't go wide enough. I'll touch them up, check them out. Okay, good. Good, good. All right, so that whole line there is good. So we've got multiple breaks in these traces. So what I will do is go through and take some bus wire and just lay them down. And uh, the components in this area that, that are affected here, I'll go ahead and pull those out replace them if I have them 
uh, clean up that side as well, but replace the components if I have them. Uh, on this side, like I said, I'll go ahead and put down some new uh, bus wire, tin wire, solder that all down. And then when it's all said and done, I'll come in with some more conformal coating and lay it down on top. Now, I've had this conformal coating for many, many years, and this will actually be the first time I've used it, had a chance to use it. So let me do that. I won't bore you. I think we've all seen uh, parts being removed and, and stuff like that. And then I'll come back to you uh, when I've got the new parts in. Real quick, let's flip this over and let's see what might be involved. Ooh. All right. So a lot of that right there. A lot of this is what will need to be pulled out. So... I'm going to take a reference photo and take readings the best I can. We already know I can't see the color code that's on that. So I'll take a picture, test it with the meter, read it, and then once I get those parts out and get it underneath my magnifying glass, I will confirm the, uh, the values and write them down and ensure I get the... Uh, right parts back in there. All right, so let me get that done and uh, I'll be back.